Welcome to Brampton Traveller. Uh, first, I would like to thank all the subscribers and everyone that has supported my channel throughout the years. Uh, it's uh, always great, uh, you know, to receive comments, feedback, uh, and to hear, you know, that sometimes videos that I post uh, have inspired some of you uh, to take trips uh, with your Brampton folding bike. What I would like to talk about in this uh, short video is what, in my experience, is the most likely failure. Uh, that you might encounter when you take a Brompton on a tour. If you followed some of my previous videos, I did talk in detail on uh, the things that I do to make sure that the bike is in top condition before I leave for a tour. Uh, as we all know, Bromptons have got a lot of proprietary parts, uh, which means that if uh, uh, some of them fail, you will not be able to fix them while on the road. So it is really important to try and be proactive, so to try and replace uh, parts, uh, replace everything that you think has got some wear and tear. And if you go to the Brompton site or contact uh, Brompton directly, they will be able to tell you uh, what is their suggested mileage uh, as far as replacing parts goes. So this is something that I bear in mind. I try to have a bike which is uh, fully functional and uh, well maintained before I leave on my tour. Having done that uh, and having traveled on a Brompton for about 15, 20,000 kilometers by now on my tours, uh, I can really say that the bike has been really bomb proof and I never had any mechanical failure uh, that has stopped me from touring. But there is one thing which I believe uh, it's really important to take into consideration. And this is something that happened to me uh, a couple of times. This is something that can happen if you take, uh, like I do, your bike on flights and you use a soft bag rather than a hard case. Now, in other videos, I did talk of the reasons why I prefer to take a soft bag. Uh, you know, there's fact of uh, if you take a hard case, you know, you probably go over the limit of the airline, so you incur in charges. There's the fact that, you know, if you take uh, um, a hard case a suitcase for the Brompton, you would have to leave it somewhere and then pick it up on the way back. And that would also mean that, you know, you always have to go uh, for your tour. You have to take a loop and go back to the original destination. And sometimes, you know, I like to be able, uh, you know, to go arrive somewhere, take the bike, travel and then depart from somewhere else. So these are all reasons why I do like uh, still a soft bag. I have checked in the bike on flights about 20 times by now. And uh, a couple of times uh, what happened is that the rear rack uh, got slightly bent on the stays and um, probably because of the way the bike folds uh, you know you have the rack is uh, supporting the bike and so it's at the bottom of your soft bag and what can happen is that when the bike is loaded and maybe slightly mishandled uh, and there is extreme pressure uh, put on the rack um, what can happen is that the stays uh, bend and uh, as, a, as a consequence, because the, the mudguard uh, also is really, really tight to the wheel, uh, what can happen is that the, the mudguard can push on the tire. And once you open the bike and you're at the airport, you might find out that your rear wheel doesn't move. So as an example, because this uh, happened to me on my latest trip uh, to Thailand, I just want to show you uh, what I mean. So if you look at the stays here, you can see that they're very, very slightly bent. And uh, if I lift the rear wheel and try and spin the wheel, as you will see, there is some resistance because the mudguard is touching the tire. Those two times when it happened to me, uh, it never prevented me from completing my tour. So what I simply had to do was to just, uh, uh, with some, a bit of force, to kind of pull the stays a bit together, uh, give a little shift to the rack, and the, the rear wheel was again spinning freely. Uh, so as I said, you know, it was not a big, a big deal. Uh, but you know, there might be times when your rack is uh, bent to the point where it's really touching the wheel and there is nothing you can do. So this is why I think it is really important and it's a very important skill to have when you're touring with your Brompton to be able uh, to replace, for example, the rack. So if I were you, I would suggest that you do some practice whenever uh, it is time to replace the rack or if you have a Brompton which doesn't have one yet, uh, take a chance to practice to replace it yourself. There are a couple of uh, very good videos on YouTube and I will put the link below the video 
uh, that will show you the process uh, that you have to go through in order to uh, remove or install the rack. If you're able to replace the rack yourself, you will find some quick solution, even if the rack is really badly bent. Uh, what is most likely happening, as I said, is the fact that the mudguard uh, will touch the wheel. So for example, one simple solution would be uh, to remove the rack, take away uh, the mudguard, and uh, probably this will already solve the problem because your, your wheel will be spinning again. Uh, you won't have a mudguard, but you know, this is not a tragedy. Uh, we can continue our tour without it. Finally, should all these options uh, for some reason not work for you, uh, you'll be left with the final uh, solution, um, which is uh, to remove the rack completely. Of course, this is not ideal because it would mean that uh, uh, the backpack then would have to be uh, worn by yourself. And uh, I agree that this is not an ideal situation to be on a tour. But you know, it might uh, at least get you to a place where you would find uh, a solution. There might be a place where uh, you, know, you are able to get a Brompton rack replaced. Um, or you know, at least you will have the option not to be completely stuck. Um, so that's the reason why I wanted to highlight in this video the importance of something like this. Uh, I'm not a particularly technical person myself, but I have replaced a couple of racks by now. And uh, should I get into the position uh, where uh, this happens to me again, I know that it will never prevent me from continuing my tour and enjoying the bike ride. So I hope you found this useful. If you do have uh, some solutions um, on, on this, maybe a different type of racks that you've used uh, that are more reliable than the Brompton racks, uh, I'd be very, very interested uh, to know. And uh, just drop me a comment and uh, so that I'll be able to read and maybe hopefully in the future test some other solutions. Uh, until then, thank you again for watching and uh, looking forward to see you next time on one of these videos. Thank you.